In this video, we dive into one of my favorite subjects. And here's why it's my favorite. Because it makes things easier. Anything that makes life easier, I'm all for. I hope you are too. This is something you've probably heard of and you've probably never used in learning and development or measurement and evaluation, especially. And that is, drum roll please, the domino effect. The domino effect, I can't take credit for it. It's literally something that was referenced in a fantastic book called The One Thing. It's a book about living your life with purpose and on purpose. And they talk about the domino effect. It's exactly like you might imagine. Imagine if I had a giant domino and I wanted to knock it over to make everything else that comes after it easier. That's exactly what the domino effect is. The challenge is figuring out what is that large domino that we should be knocking over first that's going to make everything else easier or no longer necessary. So that is the purpose of this video. Let's get started. If you don't know me already, I am Dr. Elena Schlachta. I am the host of Measurement Made Easy, and I have a book coming out very soon called Measurement and Evaluation on a Shoestring. The whole purpose of these videos and any of the resources that come out of our community of practice is literally to make measuring learning outcomes or really the outcomes of any project you're working on easier and more intuitive, such that you're measuring everything. Because the truth is, any project, whether it's learning related or it's marketing, or it's just a project we're doing on the side, like I do home renovations and I wanna make sure I'm staying on budget and I'm going to meet the goals of the project in time. Measuring makes all of those things easier and helps us to be more productive and get the goals that we're looking for. So I hope you found yourself in the right video. And without further ado, let's talk about the domino effect. If you're wondering who is the domino effect most helpful for and in what use cases, it's this. Imagine you already know your metrics, perhaps your stakeholders, the leader of your learning and development team, or perhaps even your client has told you, these are the things that we want to evaluate. Well, sometimes there are a lot of things on that list. And you're probably wondering at some point, how can we simplify this or how do we begin? The domino effect allows us to take a laundry list of metrics or a laundry list of really anything and distill it down to one to three of the most important metrics or the most important things we should be focused on right now, such that making measurement of those other things is easier or no longer even appropriate. So I have a case study for you, and it comes from one of my favorite nonprofits that for the sake of anonymity, I'm not going to share, but they are a wonderful organization. They do outdoor education programming for young people. So this isn't an adult education program, but for our example and for our learning, it really doesn't matter. So we have this fantastic outdoor education program. And like many of our case studies, these are real people. These are real organizations. So I did a workshop for them just last week. And in the workshop, I talked about the domino effect because they're trying to figure out what metrics should we be collecting to tell prospective donors the amazing work that we're doing using both anecdotal data, but also hard quantitative data to have the most powerful story that we can tell. So we use the domino effect. And I wanna share with you not only the example metrics that we were using with this nonprofit, just to kind of get you to wrap your head around it, but also to help you apply the same thinking to any of the other projects that you may want to measure. So this particular organization, like many of us that do education programming, they have great data around attendance and who's showing up, who's showing up on repeat and the amount of engagement within the programs themselves. But that isn't sufficient enough to tell a story of so what? people participate in the program, what is that doing for the individuals themselves? And what is that doing perhaps for the community as well, because folks got that particular education experience. So that was the charge that we faced in the workshop that I did last week that we get to learn from together. The philosophy behind this framework is we want to just start small and simple because we can always add complexity later. 
if we start with something too complex, we might never get started or we might get completely overwhelmed and lost by the complexity of what it is we're trying to measure. So if we prioritize the metrics that have the biggest impact on what we're trying to do, it truly does make everything easier. And that's why the domino effect is such a brilliant concept. We get to use the domino effect in two ways when we are specifically measuring learning outcomes. The first way is what you see in this visual. And what you're looking at is the hypothesis for the outdoor education program in terms of its immediate, short-term, and long-term outcomes. We have four buckets of data that we must tie together. You've heard it said in social media, you've heard it said in the news, make it make sense. What's going on in the world? Make it make sense. This hypothesis framework is a very similar thing. We want these four buckets of data to all make sense together. So bucket number one is what we pretty much already have covered, and that's engagement statistics. Bucket number two is what I think of as the immediate outcomes of the development program. And they often have sub buckets. So that would be your mindset and attitude changes. That would be the sort of technical immediate skills and then capabilities. So these are things that any program we put together is going to have an immediate outcome in one of, or maybe even all of these buckets. So we wanna get really clear on what are those things that we anticipate seeing out of the program. And then we're gonna make a list of those things. Bucket number three are the short-term outcomes. So sometime after a program ends, because somebody participated in the program, there's going to be this other thing that happens. I think of it as like, so what you participated in a leadership training? What's it supposed to do in terms of the organization? What's it post, What's the leadership training supposed to do between the leader and their team? There's short-term outcomes and we can make bullet points of those. And then lastly, longer-term outcomes is that fourth bucket. Those are things, if your short-term outcomes show up or they are, if we can influence those short-term outcomes, then we can also likely in time see these other longer term outcomes show up as well. So those are our four buckets of data that we all want to line up. And I think of this as the first set of dominoes, that bucket number one, that engagement data, if we don't get people participating in our programs, well then nothing else matters. So we have to make sure that people are showing up and they're engaging in the highest ways in your program. So once we knock that domino over, we get to the next bucket, and that's the immediate outcomes of your program, your programmatic outcomes, those mindset and skill and capability changes. So once we collect data on the degree to which that growth is happening, we can then knock that domino over, and that leads us to our short-term outcomes. So if people are getting the growth outcomes that we imagine inside of the program, well, that gives us a high probability of those shorter term outcomes taking place. You see where I'm going with this. Each one of these dominoes knocks over the other, but we can't knock over the next domino until the first one has been knocked over prior. So we wanna make sure that all of the data in each of these four buckets also make sense together. Because if I have a program that's an outdoor education program and I'm talking about weight loss, does that make sense? Does the program have immediate growth outcomes that lead to long-term weight loss? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but the data that we collect has to tell that story consistently. And that's the challenge in this particular case study with our outdoor education program. So I wanna show you yet a few more visuals to help us practice the domino effect. Okay, so now that you understand at a high level, the hypothesis framework. It's basically helping us to organize what are all the metrics that we could collect? What are all the indicators that show us that growth and change has taken place because our program occurred? Once we have that sort of all lined up and you can see an example here on the screen and what you should observe right away is that there's a whole bunch of data listed in bullet points. These are all totally possible things that we could be measuring. Now, we don't want to measure it all. We can, but should we? And the answer is no. We don't need to measure every possible indicator. 
Now, maybe you do in some cases need to have multiple indicators that you're collecting data on because yes, the more indicators of growth or change that we have in the, in the form of data, the stronger the argument is. That being said, we don't necessarily need to have 10 metrics that we collect when we could possibly only be collecting three. And so the opportunity here using the domino effect is that we figure out what are the one, two, or three most important metrics for us to be collecting. Again, imagine if you knock that domino over, you see growth with those metrics. The argument is what you could probably see growth happening in those other things too. So what are the most important things? That's the practice for us here today. So I wanna call your attention to the first bucket. This was a brainstorm that we did with the team to figure out, and everybody shared their perspective. What are the mindset or attitude changes? What are the immediate technical skill growth? And then what are the capabilities that we might see come about or change immediately after somebody participates in your program, or maybe even within the program timeline itself. So what you see here are bullet points of all of the different possible metrics or possible growth that we could capture. Now, knowledge is also something that falls under this, but I like to skip knowledge because in my perspective, knowledge is just a means to an end. We use knowledge to help us build skills or to shift mindsets. It's the exchange of knowledge that is used in the development process. So I personally just don't waste time on knowledge. However, if you're doing a program that is for compliance purposes or you are genuinely helping somebody to prepare for some sort of exam, um, then of course we wanna show that people are growing their knowledge in a specific area. But for this use case and for any development opportunity that is looking at behavior change or performance changes, I skip metrics on knowledge altogether. It's just more time and energy that we don't need to spend. So that being said, dial into this bucket of mindset, technical skills, and capabilities. And just take a minute and look at the list of bullet points. Here's where we're going to practice the domino effect. So let's just look at the capabilities for a second. Let's start all the way at the bottom of this list. So you see maybe eight things there. Just take a look at every single bullet point and ask yourself, if I were to only measure one, two, or three of the things on this list, what would be the most important? What would be that domino where if we knocked that metric over, all the other things on this list would probably show up um, in terms of the development for young people? So take a minute and come up with your own answer. I have mine written down. Once you've done your own work, turn me back on and we can compare notes. Okay, here are the four things that we came up with. One is problem solving. The other is self-confidence. And the last, trying new things. So actually I skipped ahead and that's okay. I synthesized what I believed were the most important metrics in the entire list of mindset and skills and capabilities. So we had trying new things as one of the most important mindset pieces. And I would also say, because this is a program where people are getting in the outdoors, we also wanna show that they have a love for the outdoors that has increased. But my thinking is that most parents who put their children in outdoor programs they probably already have a family that has some level of appreciation of enjoying the outdoors and that it's kind of a biased sample, if you will. If we had a random sample of young people, maybe from urban areas and rural areas, perhaps we might see some growth for those young people who are maybe not used to being outdoors. But this particular outdoor program is actually in the wilderness area of Montana. And as a result, we might have a higher degree of young people already loving the outdoors. So I wouldn't let that be my biggest domino in the mindset area. I believe the biggest domino is the willingness and the comfort and trying new things because that makes all the other things on the list a little bit easier. Now, if you look at the skills, the technical skills, we're actually skipping over that altogether too now. I definitely recommend that we collect data on those technical skills, but the reason that I'm not emphasizing that here is that we believe if people have 
the technical skills of learning how to build a fire, learning how to respond if they see a bear on a hiking trail, figuring out what kinds of foods are edible in the forest and how to make shelter when it's cold or in undesirable conditions. This is a sort of simulation or an experience that gives people capabilities. So yes, we could collect data on are they good at creating fire, but at the end of the day, if they even just tried and had some success, being really good at creating a fire in the wilderness is sort of not the point. The point is that young people are in a simulation that allows them to grow in these other capabilities, such as self-confidence, such as problem solving, collaboration, et cetera. So that's where I'm skipping the technical skills in this particular case study to go for just the competencies. And so the competencies that I think are the most important, those big dominoes in this use case, probably are problem solving and self-confidence, or maybe even a self-efficacy could be a great metric there too. So the idea is that we synthesize from a laundry list of possible metrics and we ask ourselves, what's the most important thing to be measuring that if we can show data on this, there is a strong relationship between this particular metric and all the other metrics on the list, such as problem solving. If folks have problem solving capabilities and we can see growth in that, then all the other things on this list become easier for that young person or maybe even intuitive altogether. Okay. Let's move on to the short-term outcomes. So same practice, take a look at the things on this particular bullet pointed list and ask yourself what might be the most one, two or three metrics for us to be tracking to tell the story of this particular program's outcomes. So take a minute, come up with your own answer, put me on pause and when you're ready, come back. Okay. So here are some ideas. We actually did this exercise in our live community of practice. And these were some of the things that the group shared in the initial response to this question. That was healthier habits, safer choices, collaboration, getting along, and the ability to calm and center oneself. In our community of practice, those were the things that seemed like important dominoes. Now, when we further investigate, I look at healthier habits. And I know the mission statement of this particular nonprofit organization, they want to help young people have healthier habits, but if they're able to make safe choices and we can prove that they've grown in the ability to make safe choices, there's probably a high probability that they're also engaging in healthier habits. You see where I'm getting here? Where if we pick one metric that is interconnected with other metrics, but that one is more is the most important. It's like the ability to make safe choices will show up in your life in lots of different ways, which is inclusive of healthy habits. So that's how the domino effect really comes into play is that we don't need to measure everything. If we can just show growth in the one most important area that has tangential interconnected effects in so many others. So, what we came up with in our community of practice in the short term, what's the domino effect for the short term bucket? We believe that safer choices and the ability to calm and center oneself, if we could show growth in those areas after this program was over, that really was the domino that knocked over all the other outcomes as well. Now you could also make the argument for collaboration as another short term outcome. So, Again, depending on the goals of the program and what's really important for your stakeholders or your prospective donors to see, that's part of the thinking in this practice is what are the most important metrics for us to show effects in other places, but also to show the outcomes that our stakeholders and donors or anybody else that cares really wants to see. So I'm not going to dive into bucket number four. It's the same practice. We work together collaboratively when to create this list of metrics. And I didn't mention that, but it's worth saying that to get this list in the first place, you just get people together that all have some experience, some um, values, or maybe even a stake in the game to share their input on what are the long-term, short-term, immediate term, and then engagement data that we could collect. So the cool thing about this particular model is that what I showed you was working forward as in what are the dominoes that we'd want to collect in the immediate program outcomes and then the short term, we can move forward in that particular way. We can also move backwards. 
So if that makes more sense or is more intuitive, we can do the reverse engineering strategy with the domino effect as well. We can start with what are the long-term outcomes we want to see, and then what are the short-term outcomes that we have to also see movement in, and then what are the programmatic outcomes, right? So we can work the dominoes backwards as well. However it is most useful and intuitive for you, the one thing to make sure is that all of those things are in alignment. In the beginning of this video, I shared the example of somebody goes to an outdoor program and then we show data on how they've lost weight. Well, does that make sense to show those two things in relationship? If it was a weight loss program where we were working with young people who were obese and we wanted them to get more time outside and we were introducing them to different ways to be healthy in the outdoors, then sure, that makes sense. So all of these buckets of data need to align and make sense together. One more thing that is really helpful in not only coming up with this list of metrics in each of the buckets, but also figuring out your domino metrics or domino growth indicators, it's knowing the problem. So I haven't talked about needs assessments and I don't not often talk about them because in measurement and evaluation, we're looking at what's the success of this program and what does that look like? And so if we don't know what problem we're solving, we can't identify what success looks like. So needs assessments kind of go hand in hand with helping us to figure out what our success metrics could be. So if you haven't done a needs analysis, make sure that in any work that you're doing, trying to figure out the immediate program outcomes, short-term outcomes, and then longer-term outcomes, they should all make sense with the problem that you're trying to solve. So again, if we're looking at helping with childhood obesity and we're teaching young people how to make safer choices using nature and the outdoors, because the problem is that we are working with a group of young people who have diabetes and have unhealthy eating habits and have high rates of obesity, then yeah, that all makes sense. But what if it's a different problem? Then we probably wouldn't want to be looking at obesity as a long-term outcome of our program. So it just all has to make sense. So you see where I'm getting, all of this has to make sense, but the domino effect is such an important tool to help us identify what's the most important one, two, or three things to measure in each of our buckets in that hypothesis framework. So I know that's a lot and I hope it's helpful. You'll see in the notes for this video, not only an example hypothesis framework that you can use, um, but also a great image of the domino effect courtesy of the one thing. And of course, if you're ever looking for a community of practice to test out some ideas around measuring and evaluating, to meet really cool people, and just build skills and perspective in the measurement sector, we have a community and we'd love for you to be a part of us. So without further ado, that's it for this video and we look forward to seeing you in the next one.